Wrestling is in Mark Coleman's blood. He was a national champion at Ohio State and part of the U.S. Olympic wrestling team. The Hammer would lead the era of the wrestler into MMA, became the godfather of ground and pound. I really felt like these guys can't stop me from taking them down. Right. And, you know, no rules back in the day. It was beautiful. You only have two weapons to defend with. You got to excite the fans, and that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't know any better. His impact was felt immediately, winning the UFC 10 and 11 tournaments in 1996, and then defeating Dan Severin the following year to capture the inaugural UFC heavyweight title. You didn't get to enjoy the belt too long after you won the initial heavyweight title with against uh, Dan Severn because Mo Smith came in, yeah. and that started a four-fight losing streak. Uh, what what, what well, was going on at that time? Well, uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, it's easier to win the belt than to keep the belt. Nothing against Mo Smith, but if I would have prepared properly, I think I would have destroyed him. But I didn't, because I didn't prepare properly. He did. And what a humbling, humbling, humbling experience. Yeah. Coleman's career was in a tailspin when he entered the 2000 Pride Grand Prix Tournament as a major underdog. I dedicated my life to winning this Pride Grand Prix. You saw the reaction afterwards. Uh, you know, what can I say? Uh, I'm an emotional guy, and that was it. That's what came out. You know, hey, you know I'm getting a little emotional thinking about that. Everybody counting you out to come back and, and mm, it's nice to, critics wrong. nice to prove your critics wrong, but the critics are usually right, but you can prove them wrong sometimes. Controversy followed Coleman both in and out of the ring, emphasized by the storm that came after his second loss to Fedor Milianenko in 2006. You're speaking about your daughters. A lasting image for a lot of MMA fans yep. is that second fight mm -hmm. against Fedor Emelianenko. Your daughters are there to embrace you, and what memories do you have of that? It was a tough night because I took a lot of criticism from a lot of fans and a lot of professionals claiming that I traumatized my daughters, and you know, right. at the time, you know, being a dad was the most important thing to me. I just remember very, very clearly. You know, I don't, I don't mind losing. I just don't want to hurt my kids, you know. And then to turn around and see my kids right there, I had to immediately turn into a father. It was just kind of like a moment from like the being thrown in so fast. Like everyone thinks it's all his fault, but really I would have found out about it sooner or later. So it's honestly not his fault at all. It was honestly the time of my life because it was so fun out there. So I don't regret that at all. Like it was a sad moment, but it was like a great moment in time too. Just knowing that like he fought one of the best fighters in the world, like Fedor Emelianenko, he's crazy. He's what's up. Coleman would return to the UFC in 2009, earning a huge win over Stefan Bonner and losing to Shogun Hua and Randy Couture before once again being released. Today, the Hall of Famer's daughters are his primary focus, and like many MMA pioneers, he's trying to figure out his next move. My oldest daughter, Mackenzie Marie Coleman, she's out here competing at the Arnold Classic, and I'm so proud of this one, too. They, they're both they're getting, they're getting A's. Uh, she's an all-star shortstop, a point guard, and she's an all-star gymnast. They're both cheerleaders. It's a lot of traveling. Keeps me busy, man, but but it's my life. All right, Mark, you're not retired yet. Play matchmaker. You get one last fight against anyone. Who would your opponent be? It, it seems to always come down to one guy, uh, Tito, what's his last name? I'm guessing Tito Ortiz, because oh, yeah, that's yeah, everybody yeah. wants Tito. Tito apparently. Ortiz, Dan Severn, He's the one calling me out every day. He wants a revenge match versus yes, me, does. but I keep telling him he's 280 pounds and he needs to, he needs to lose some weight and then maybe I'll think about it. But uh, Dan Severn, Ken Shamrock, Tito Ortiz, other than that, no. We're gonna keep you busy if we can make those happen. I, I gotta I gotta get in shape. The hammer. That's it, man.
Watch Inside MMA live every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on HDNet, your home for MMA. Join the conversation on Twitter, Facebook, and online at HD.net.